Hello, my name is Miracle. This is another Colingo class. Um, this is an art class. I saw an interesting article online and it had to do with a plane that crashed. I'm not sure of the outcome of the plane crash, but after the plane crashed, someone took the plane parts and turned it into art. I thought it was an interesting story, so we will explore that today. Okay, for those of you who are new to Colingo, please know that Colingo offers classes in or for individuals who want to learn to speak English. If you want to learn to speak English, please visit colingo.com, C-O-L-I-N-G-O, haichu, dot com. Please do not send me messages on YouTube. Please don't do that. I, w I cannot respond to them. I get too many. So if you want information about how to join these classes, you want information about um, these courses and the company in particular, please go directly to the website, colingo.com. Thank you so much. There we go. Okay, Chu. It looks like it's just the two of us. You get to practice your pronunciation and anything you want. <laughs> yeah, can you hear me? Because uh, from the... Something's wrong. Hello? Mm, you might me? want to refresh your window. Something's wrong. I can't hear you clearly. Okay. Okay. Okay, and I think I'll do the same too, just in case. Okay, two, two, can you hear me? Two, 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 can you hear me? Mm. I don't hear you, Chu. I'm not sure what's wrong. Hi, Yigeni. Hi, hi, Yigeni. Mm, Chu is having problems with his connection today. <sighs> All right, so I have a warm-up question for you. Mm -hmm. Here we go. Well, first, how, how are your classes going today with Kalingo? Is everything going well? Mm, yes, I think it was good. Good. Uh, okay. I had a day off today, so I decided to dedicate this day to, to Kalingo. I am so jealous of you guys. I wish they had something like this for other languages. It's a really good idea. Yeah. I wish I could do something like this for any language that I was studying, but this is pretty cool. Maybe Kalingo will duplicate this service for other languages. That would be so <laughs> yes. neat. Yeah. Oh my gosh, I would love that. Chu, is your Hello, sound working? Fisher. I can hear you now. Yeah, I changed my laptop because I know <laughs> I I have two, and one of them is with the software of Windows 8, and oh. uh, our oh. Colingo software doesn't fit fit the uh, Windows 8 very well. It's not compatible. Compatible. Mm -hmm. Incompatible. Uh, uh, yes, it's not compatible, or it is in incompatible. Mm hmm Very good. Do you do you have um, a Mac by any chance? No, I get I got a HP and Toshiba. Uh, I have an HP. That's what I use. But I have Windows Seven. If I do have to get a new computer, I was thinking about getting a Mac because I don't want to have to deal with Windows Eight. <laughs> yeah, Windows Eight is a uh, is the best software because I I it took me a it took me a long time to get used to this new software and you now they upgrade their software to um, Windows 8 Smart. Windows 8 Smart? They have a new version of Windows yeah. 8? Oh, that's yeah. a bad sign. That's a really bad sign. 
Oh, it's yeah, like Windows our... Vista all over again. <laughs> yes, we consumers don't buy it with Windows 8. It's horrible. Yeah. Mm. You would think maybe they should learn their lesson from Windows Vista. You know, Windows Vista was horrible. I remember <laughs> when I, I got Vista, I had to pay for a cord. I paid $100 for a cord so that I could transfer my information from... Uh, what was it, Windows something to Windows XP, uh, Windows XP to Windows Vista or something, I had to pay $100 for a cord to transfer my information. It was ridiculous. Oh, it was just horrible. Yeah, yeah I think I'm going to get a Mac. What do you use, Eugenie? Uh, <clears throat> I'm using Windows 7. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, here is the warm-up question, guys. Can an item that has been destroyed be considered art? You know what destroyed means. It means yeah. broken and yes. you can't use it. Can that be considered art? Mm, I think it may be. Okay. Under considered what art. circumstances would it be art? Mm, under what circumstances? Mm-hmm. You said maybe, and I'm saying when or how, how, how would it be. But I say under what circumstances would it be considered? Under what circumstances? I don't know, maybe uh, if someone had a good sense. Okay, good sense of what? Mm, good sense of creating something interesting from this broken parts. Okay, from these broken parts. From, from these. Mm -hmm. So this, this broken part. I think you are thinking these. You are thinking these, but when you say it, it sounds like this. Am I right? Mm -hmm. Are you thinking yeah. these? I'm thinking this. Yeah, because yeah, I I know that your grammar is really good. So I could not imagine you making that mistake many times. I think it's just pronunciation. Remember yes, I your can pronounce this in this in in both cases. Yes. Your long e goes down. E it's long. E these. Mm -hmm. Can you do that for me? These. These. A little faster. These. There you go. Now I will hear these broken parts, not this broken parts. Mm -hmm. Very good. Okay. So do you think at the end of this article that we read, do you think that you will be able to see plain parts as art? Mm, I guess that I saw it. Oh. <laughs> yes. Okay. So what is your opinion? Art or not? Yes, yes, definitely no? art. Really? Okay, very good. Let's ask Chu. Chu, can an item that has been destroyed be considered art? Um, I think if these broken parts are um, significant, uh, I mean, if these parts has uh, historical meanings, and uh, in this way maybe it could be uh, art. And uh, also, if this uh, broken parts uh, had have connection with something is very famous or meaningful, maybe it's a person or or an event, a big event. Maybe it's, it it can become uh, art. And uh, the last uh, um, possible. Possible, possible, possible possibility. Maybe we can reconstruct these um, broken pieces to another um, to another um, picture. Maybe it could be um, it could be a uh, art. I'm trying to get a ah oh, sorry pin. I've lost all my pins, so I couldn't take notes while you were talking. 
Please continue. I'm just looking for a pin. That's all. Please, please keep talking. Actually, I finished with my uh, opinion on this. Um, okay. But, yeah. The first uh, is um, is this uh, broken parts has a uh, historical meaning. Yes. And it could be an art. And the second is uh, if these broken parts has had have some connection with a famous person or famous or big event, it could be an art. And the last one is um, we can use these broken parts and rebuild them into another um, another. I I, I want I'm trying to find the right word. I think it's a uh, reconstruction. Maybe this. Word. Okay, uh, Recon That's very good. So who determines? If if something that is broken should be art, who determines what is art anyway? Audience. Whose opinion? Ah, so not necessarily government, not necessarily an organization, but the audience, the people in general. Yes. How many people? One, two, fifty, twenty. Um, no, actually, it's not the uh, numbers. I think, like maybe the uh, art critic. Creatists, they get the sense what is uh, art if they uh, give the, um, the, re the broken pieces a good comment, maybe it becomes an art. And also, I think if the average people, they visit um, a lot with uh, uh, exhibition of these broken parts, maybe it could be, it, we can call it uh, Art and uh, also maybe yeah, that's it. I think very nice, very nice. All right, guys. You know what? I just realized um, I'm doing all of these art classes, and I love I. I don't know if it's A Weiwei or I Weiwei, but I love him. And I'm thinking, oh my God, I need to do a, a class on him. I I already have my classes planned for the next week, so. If you want to look at the schedule in about two weeks, I'm going to try to add a way way to that will be interesting. I'm going to stay away from political conversations, but <laughs> really just talk about his art and his message. I don't, you know, I don't yeah. want to get into any kind of trouble, but um, <laughs> I think he's he's an important architect and artist. Yes, he's think, an artist. Do you think that that's too dangerous? No, because he's so. You think it's okay? Yeah, I think it's okay. Okay, good, good. I'm excited. I love him. He's awesome. Okay, guys, let me give you the... Whoops. I just closed it. Do you know who that is, Eugenie? Ai Weiwei? Ai Weiwei? No, I don't know. Oh, he's so cool. His father is a great poet, poetry in China. Poet. Poet. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I knew he was important. I couldn't remember what he did. His father's not alive anymore, is he? Yeah. He he is. He, he isn't alive. Oh, okay, okay. Okay. All right. So here is the article. Oh Jesus, that's not the right article. Siri, wait. Yes, it is. Okay. I changed the name. Because I didn't like this. It says from Bauhaus to Bombers. I didn't want to put Bombers in the name of the class because that that's just not a good message. So so I used the, the plain factory parts instead. Okay. Okay. So let's get started. I think Eugenie's being a little quiet today. Let's get started with Eugenie. Okay. <laughs> um, the Daily Peak <clears throat> in, uh -huh. 90, in 1942, Mies van der Rohn uh, designed the concert hall around the plane factory's bones. Uh -huh. um, this gorgeous photo montage by Mie, Mie van der Rohn 
in this cut and paste show at the Museum of Modern Art is a study for an Im imaginary concert hall prepared for uh, Architectural Forum magazine for 1932 feature on an American town of the future. It is striking how Mies, who was a builder through and through, made truly stunning works on paper, whereas his colleague and rival Le Corbusier, though always claiming props as a painter, was really only good in uh, 3D. That comes clear in the Carpusier survey that just upstairs from where the Mies is hanging at MOMA, a daily peak, a daily picked its best painting yesterday. Oh. Okay, so MOMA is the Museum of Modern Art. Mm -hmm. uh, you see you see that first sentence? It says in the cut and paste show at the Museum of Modern Art. They usually they should do this. If you guys are if you're writing a paper and you are going to introduce an acronym. An acronym is where you take the first letter of mm -hmm. a proper noun. So Museum of Modern Art. It's four letters. So Museum starts with M, of starts with O, um, mm -hmm. Modern starts with M, and then Art starts with A. So M-O-M-A. What you should do is this. You should put it in parentheses so that you can properly introduce that to the person so that you don't look at it at the end of the paragraph and go, what is that? Mm -hmm. So if you're going to use an acronym, that's the way to do it. You want to spell out the, the proper noun and then in parentheses use the acronym. And now we know, oh, so they forgot to do that in this article. That's why it was confusing. Okay, mm -hmm. this is a short article. What I want you to do is read it again, please. And then, uh, because the first time you read it for pronunciation, the second time it's easier to read it for content. Yes. So please read it again. This gorgeous photo montage by Mia van der Rohe in the cut and paste show at the Museum of Modern Art is a study for an imaginary concert hall prepared for a, a architectural, architectural forum magazine for 1942 feature on the American uh, feature on the American town of the future. It is striking how Mies, who was a builder through and through, made truly stunning works on paper, whereas his colleague and rival Le Corbusier, though always claiming props as a painter, was really only good in 3D. That comes clear in the Corbusier survive survey that's mm -hmm. just upstairs from where the Mies is hanging at Museum of Modern Art. Uh, I daily picked it best painting yesterday. Okay, so they're not really telling us about this this art. They're not really telling us about it. They gave us a link and I followed it but it doesn't really it's a link to a collection of photos. It's not to mm -hmm. to this piece. So what we are going to do is look at this piece and talk about it. We're going to try to figure it out, figure out what is art here, what is happening. Okay, so what is this? What is a photo montage? Mm. There are a lot of French words in art. Did you notice that? You seem to read the French words pretty easily. There are a lot of uh, French words in art. Yes, yes. What is a montage? Montage, montage. when we... It's like a fake photo when we... when we create unreal image of something. Ah, you're talking about when we like cut and paste. Uh, yes. Like a, yes. a photo montage. You, you take like little pictures. Montage. And you put a picture here and there and here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's more of a contemporary way of looking at it. Montage can be used in so many different ways. When they yeah. say photo montage, they don't mean one photo. 
they don't mean one photo with lots of photos on it. They mean a sequence of photos. Mm -hmm. Here's one. Here's the next one. Here's the next one. It's a sequence of photos. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. We also use montage sequence. We use that in film. And what we are saying there is uh, it's the same concept, but in film, let's say that Mm. Oh, let's see. I'm trying to think of a simple sequence. You show my face. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. You show my face, like a close-up of my face. And then, okay, <laughs> I'm trying to think of a sequence. You, you show a close-up of my face, and then I go, oh, like that. Mm -hmm. And then you cut to another person. And the other person is like this, mm -hmm. like that. So you have two pictures, but you are saying a lot. You are saying that someone is coming at me, and I'm afraid. Mm -hmm. So just with these two pictures, you're, you're telling a story. So when you are dealing with photography or art or film or visual media, people use montage and montage sequences to tell a story more effectively. Make okay. Sense? Yeah. Okay, good. So what are we saying here? This gorgeous photo montage. <clears throat> What's the name of the show? The name of the show, Cut and Paste. Mm -hmm. And this is the full name. They gave us a link here. This is a full name from Architectural Assemblage to Collage City. So mm -hmm. architecture is buildings. So from buildings to Collage City. And they have a number of pictures here. There is it. Mm -hmm. They have a number of pictures. But this is interesting to me that they are not showing us the montage. I don't know if they're protected or what. But they're not showing us these pictures, which is kind of kind of frustrating. It's a little bit crazy. Like, why are you writing an article about art, but we can't really see all of the pictures? Yeah, it's only one. Yeah, it's kind of weird. Okay, but it says that the show is at the MOMA, MOMA Museum of Modern Art, and it is a study for an imaginary concert hall. Okay, what does imaginary mean? Um, imaginary... Oh, it's like unreal, like imaginary friend, which is not real, but I maybe I'm talking with him. Yes. Sometimes. Okay. Why would you need an imaginary concert hall? Uh, what is a concert hall? Tell us what a concert hall is. Concert hall is a place where usually goes different concerts. Mm -hmm. Welcome back to. Yes, you go to see concerts there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So why uh, would you need an imaginary concert hall? Maybe because they're talking about uh, down of the future. Maybe it will be in, in the future. I don't know. I, I can um, link these ideas. This these ideas. Uh -huh. So you're saying maybe it is a plan for a real concert hall? Mm. You think you think he's saying we should make a real concert hall out of plane parts? Mm, I don't know maybe, but I'm not sure. Mm. Okay, so when you go to a concert hall what do you do? Why do you go there? Um, I go there to listen music. Mm -hmm. You go there to listen and to do what else? I'm not looking for a specific answer, but I'm tying these ideas together. So I, I don't know what the answer is. You know, with art, there is no real answer. Yeah. Yeah. Everyone has a different answer. So why do you go to a concert hall? Let's explore why. 
the artist chose to build an imaginary concert hall out of plane parts. So why do you go to a concert hall? To listen to music? Mm, I don't know, maybe they choose a plane as a building uh, with a huge territory where the, there's a fine acoustic, but I can understand uh, mm, what parts of the plane they mean. Mm. They mean. Okay. So you think that the parts of the plane have something to do with the message mm, in the yes, art? Yes. That's very interesting. I like it. I like it. You know, when I think of concert, my first idea is you go to a concert for entertainment. Sometimes you go to learn. Sometimes you go just to have fun. But I cannot imagine that we would think of a plane wreck and a plane wreck and think of fun or entertainment. So I'm thinking we are going there to watch. We are going there to listen. We are going there to learn. Maybe we are to learn something about this plane. Was the plane mm -hmm. in a war? It was 1942. Mm -hmm. Yeah. World War II. So what is the story? What are we going to watch? What are we going to hear? Whose stories are we going to hear when we look at the parts of this plane? So I think if we think concert hall, we think entertainment, but what if we think concert hall a place for us to learn and to grow? Maybe we are to learn and to grow from this wreckage. What I do don't know. I, I'm trying to get this message maybe because it is a war factory. Maybe they were built, uh, um, I don't know, planes or tanks. Oh, I see. And uh, entertainment, and they decided to to link to connect the these ideas. Interesting. Interesting. You know, talking about art, I think, is a great way to practice your English because you have to look at your vocabulary, you have yes. to express your ideas. I think I I like these art classes for you guys because you really think and you express yourselves very well. Okay. Is there anything else, Yanni? Uh, just a second. I, I want to find this word. <clears throat> Chu, is your connection okay? Are you doing okay over there? Yes. Okay. Oh, no. It's all clear. Okay. All right. So let's go to Chu. Thank you, Eugenie. Very nice job. Chu, can you read the next paragraph, please? Yeah. Um, but there's way more to uh, bounce image that is visual brilliance. As the scholar Neil Levin has discussed, the background image for the concert hall study shows an aircraft assembly plant built by Albert Kahn in Maryland in 1930, 1937 as the largest open span structure achieved until then when my sculptor is image for his, for his study the vast space was being used to build bombers. Just then. That B is silent, so it's bombers. Bombers. Mm -hmm. Build bombers. Just then attacking the Nazi regime from which mice had recently fled. Later than most of his peers, and after years of less than evident opposition, you can just see one plan behind the collapsed sculpture, Mars blacked out details of others. As Levin points out, the potent, the potent, the patent, how to speak this word? I'm sorry. The, I was over here, actually, I was typing in chat for you. 
Uh, which line are you on? On the last line. As Levin, as Levin points out. Oh, the potent. The potent, the potent formal, formal values of the study come steeped in politics and the real world. World, precisely what uh, photo montage was designed to evoke. Okay. And I know that when you read, the first time is for pronunciation, not meaning. So I won't ask you any questions yet. Um, the f the word fled, photo montage. I think you said poto. I think you may have photo. said poto. When you see ph, it's going to be. Mm -hmm. If I'm not mistaken, I can't remember, but I think these might be German words. Like photo, photography, um, I, I can't remember, I can't think of any, photoelectric. I think the word photo comes from somewhere in Europe, probably Germany is what I'm thinking, I can't remember. But whenever you see PH, it's not a word that originated in the US, it's a borrowed word. And PH equals F. Yeah. Okay. And then fled f l e d it's a short e sound e eh. fled uh huh and i think you said fleed but yes, fleed yes i said fleed uh -huh. fleed double e right that's not a word so fled is past tense mhm mm yeah um come you read as came and I think that I, this seems to be a common, a common error coming from Asia. I'm not sure why. Is, is there something about the letter O that makes you think A, the short O? No, I, hear I, this think, I think it's a personal mistake. Re I don't know. <laughs> I, I heard, um, I think, a, a student from Thailand. Uh, I don't know, maybe I'm wrong, maybe it's not Asia, but I was trying to connect it, like is there a sound from Asia that I'm missing? Okay, so come, not come. came, mm -hmm. oh, and you know what, maybe you were trying to figure out what kind of O that is, maybe you're were, you were looking at it and it looks like comb, because it has an E on the end, and then you're like, well maybe it's the short O, come, ah, ah, but it's actually yeah. It's just your you. I yeah. Mhm. Mm yep. Okay. Thank you. So you're welcome. Can you read it again? And this time for comprehension. Mm. Yes, exactly. Mm. But there's way more to my image than its visual bright brilliance. As the score Neil Levin has discussed, the background image for the concert hall study shows an aircraft assembly plant built by Albert Kahn in Maryland in 1937. As the largest open span structure achieved until then, when Miles grabbed his image for his study, mm -hmm. the versus space was being used to build bombers just then yeah. attacking the Nazi regime from which mines had recently fled. fled. Later yes. than most of his peers, and after years of less than evident opposition, you can just say opposition. one opposition. Uh -huh. You can just see one plan behind the clutched sculpture. Um, clutched sculpture. Clutched. Collage. What they're doing is taking the word collage and they are turning it into an adjective. Collaged sculpture. So that is a sculpture made out of a collage. They're, they're making it an adjective. A collaged sculpture. Collaged sculpture. Mm -hmm. Mice blacked out details of others. As Levin points out the potent 
formal values of it, of this study come steeped in politi politics and the real world. Mm -hmm. Precisely what photo montage montage mm -hmm. exactly was designed to invoke 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 invoke. Evoke. Evoke. In. Oh. Yeah, I think you were thinking of evoke. evoke. So you have e, and then your short i sound. Invoke. Invoke. Uh, I'm not sure. Is it because of the v? You're closing a lot for the n. Is it because of the v? Invoke. Invoke. Yes, I think it was the V. Well, the N and the V together. Invoke. Stay open. Invoke. Very nice. Very nice. Okay, can you tell us what you read? <laughs> Actually, I'm not sure that I get the exact meaning with this paragraph because I just read a scholar who are uh, connected with ah he gave uh -huh. he gave a comment with this uh, exhibition right uh -huh. Neil Devon yes he points out that um, I think that's Levine Levine because it has an e on the end oh. yes Levine yes. Uh, Levine um, points out um, the background of this um, this place and also what it what it what it used to be uh huh and uh, what kind of um sense contains in the concert hall hall right. and um what's the relationship between minds and uh, this place uh huh it is interesting to me that they are not really talking about the the artistic components. It's more about the structure and the history of it. Yes, yeah, here's history. yeah. Here's something that might give us a clue. Okay, the first sentence says there's way more to. I, I'm looking at this and I'm thinking yes. It, I don't know. It's coming from somewhere in Europe, so that makes me want to pronounce the I and the E differently. So I think it might be mies, but. It doesn't matter. Say the names however you want because we're not sure. Uh -huh. um, way more to me is his image than its visual brilliance. So they are saying visually it is... What When you say visually brilliant, what do you think of, Chu? Uh, visual visually brilliance brilliant. is something that we create to um, enjoy by our eyes. Okay. When you think of the word brilliant, can you give me another adjective? Adjective, uh, brilliant. Mm -hmm. If I say, Chu, you are brilliant, I don't want to make you shy. <laughs> if I say, uh, John is brilliant, what, yeah. what does that mean? It means it's, uh, uh, he is a smart guy. Yeah, okay. What does visually smart mean? Visually smart. Yeah, what does that mean? Hmm, maybe it um, breaks our ordinary vi vision, like give you a hit. Um, uh, if we put pictures in an unusual way, sometimes it calls, it create an, an a special image for us. And when we see this image, we will think that oh, it's great. Is yes. break out our usual way. Yes. So we can say creative. We can say it's creative. So what they're saying here is that there's way more to me as this image than its visual brilliance. So we know that they're talking about artistic expression, visually brilliant something it's it looks amazing okay so there's more to it let's look at the next sentence and see what is more there can you read that again 
um, as a scholar, Neil Ivan has discussed the background image for this concert hall study shows an aircraft assembly plant built by Albert Kahn, Kahn in Maryland in 1930, 1937. Okay, can you pause there? So, what is this background image? This is something that is in the background, not the forefront. This is something that's in the background, so we don't pay too much attention to it. But what is it, Chu? What's going on back there? It's an um, aircraft assembly plant. Mm -hmm. And what is that exactly? Um, it's a place where we assemble um, the different parts into our aircraft to an aircraft. When you are um, describing something, try to use different words. So if it says assemble, um, aircraft assembly, what's another word for assembly or to assemble? You try to use a different verb. What's another way to say assemble? To put something together. Yes. Okay. And aircraft? Putting together yeah. aircrafts. What's another word for aircraft? Plan. Yeah. So when you are trying to explain something, you want to use different vocabulary words altogether. Not uh, like this as assembly. Don't use the word assemble. Try to find a different verb. Okay. Yeah. And that will help you with your vocabulary too. Yes. Okay, so it shows an aircraft assembly plant. Uh, and how did you say we could reword that to? Um, you mean uh, how? This is this is a place where we put the air, aircraft parts together. Mm -hmm. Okay, and it was built by Albert Kahn in Maryland in 1937. So, guys, we know that because of the year, we're looking at the time of World War II. Yes. Why do we have a concert hall with a reminder of the war from World War II? This is where we start to have art. This is what you were talking about too, it being significant in terms of history, it being meaningful. So now um, we can say this art against an historical backdrop. Backdrop might be a word that you guys would be interested in. Backdrop means like something in the background. So we have this place of entertainment, but the backdrop is a very stark, a very sharp reminder of World War II. Yes. What is the message here, Chu? Um, I think, as to me, I think with the aircraft uh, assembly plant, with this, with this building, um, actually it reminds me of the Actually, the aircraft uh, sound when they are flying, mm. and uh, also the maybe um, people's crying, mm. and uh, also the bombs when they blast off, they have a great uh, have a loud a voice, and this actually couldn't um, couldn't made by any uh, acoustic machines. Wow. And, uh, this this things are in our memory because wow. uh, yeah it's a it's a fabulous uh, background and, yeah uh, yeah if the the concert theme is um, is um, something connected with this background sound I think actually I enjoyed the the real sound world and the Mem and the sound in my memory. So uh, it's a double um, rework. A double? Um, double provocation? Or, I don't know. If I you mean, spell it for me, which word I are you think, thinking? I think, I mean that something is real and something just in my mind, they can work together or mix with each other. And this is a special um, experience. I can imagine. Uh, were you saying world? World. Ah, okay. So, mm, 
mm, imagination meets reality something like that these two worlds coming together what you imagine and what is real sort of meet yeah. and create a new it wow that's so powerful okay I just want to ask you Ganey I don't know if you've been in an art class with you Ganey but he his brain is always going <laughs> so you Ganey do you yeah. what do you think of what she was saying before I want you to give me your opinion <clears throat> but I want you to tell me what what you think of what he's saying and then you can add on um, I should say that you said really powerful idea about the connection yeah. between sound of uh, poems and music yeah what in particular was powerful to you uh, especially that uh, nothing can do this sound so strong and so powerful that can touch any soul anybody Okay. Something like this. Yeah. I'm 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 trying to give you time to think. Uh, <laughs> even even in English, you need time to you know, even if the English is your first language, you need time to think and to get your thoughts together. So I know that you are trying to think of what you said and you're trying to get your thoughts together, so take your time. What else would you like to say? I don't know, I'm just curious why uh, the author Mm. Mice, I don't know how to pronounce right. his names. Why he blocked out details of others? What do you mean? He put this, uh, I don't know, this strip, these this figures uh, on a photo to to cover something from the from the audience you know I couldn't I couldn't tell what was happening with this picture I couldn't tell if that was something blocking the image or if that was supposed to be the concert hall I'm a little bit confused by this picture myself but mm -hmm. yeah I'm, I'm confused because I as I look at it I'm thinking is this it looks like someone put it on with a computer but are these the plain parts I don't quite know what I'm looking at mm -hmm. yeah I was a little bit disappointed especially this little statue in the front of the this picture yeah it doesn't look like it belongs there yeah yeah I'm not sure what we're looking at I've gone um, I've gone online and I tried to, you know, I followed the links and I tried to get the pictures, maybe from different angles or something, but I'm not coming up with anything. So I, I think the best that, yes, Chu, go ahead. I can see the air, uh, airplane at the statue's uh, back, right? At the back of the statue's a man. And I, we can see the plan. Can you see the plan? Let me share my screen just in case people are watching the video and they want to see. Okay. Okay. Yeah. What man? I don't see. This is a plane. Yeah. This is a plane. Yes. They have a. As statue sculpture in front of them. Are you talking about the statue yes. right here? Yeah, statue here. Okay, and what were you saying about the statue? No, I just want to um, to to answer Eugenie's question that the author mirrors blacked out uh, other details of the of this uh, um, this building you can see they have uh, yellow white gray and black walls around the uh, aircraft right mm -hmm. um, I think one of the possible answer is that 
and he wants to emphasize something. So when we when we could only say the black background and the, our 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 patient would be uh, focused uh, focus on on something special. The mm -hmm. author okay. wants to show to us. Okay, so he's using these graphic images around the actual physical structure in order to emphasize the art itself? Yeah, I, I think so. Okay. Well, you know, th like I said, that's the thing about art is it, you, you can explore it together and meanings and, you know, it, there is no right or wrong answer when it comes to art. I think exploring it is the fun part. When people say, no, this is the meaning, this is the only way it can be, that's when the art is boring. But when you really use your brain to explore many different avenues or paths, ways of thinking, ah, that's when exploring art is fun. When you get those people who say, I know everything about, ah, that's when I just want to go to sleep. But this is awesome. What do you think, Yagani? <clears throat> I don't know. I'm still looking at this little statue, and <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's go back to the little statue. <laughs> yes, I think maybe maybe it impersonates uh, a silent because uh, oh. I I don't know. Maybe war. It is a silent because after war there is nothing alive. And oh. It is complete silence. Oh, I don't know. That's so Just, sad. Just a little sad thought. It is. It's a little sad too, you guinea. Wow. Does Western does Westerners um I mean do Westerners usually say it in this but in this gesture? Um there is something called I can't really tell. Can you tell me is the is the person just sitting with their legs folded or is the person doing this? Yeah, there... it's a, I think this is a Buddhism, a Buddhism's gesture. Yeah, if you if they're doing this, if they are sitting with their legs like this, that's something that you would see in the United States. It it's a way that Native Americans, Indians would sit. So we're used to seeing people sit like that, but it's usually Indians, and we uh -huh. actually call it sitting Indian style. Uh -huh. That's what we call it. We say sit Indian style. So if they're just sitting like that, but it does look like the person is, it looks like they're praying. Is that what you're thinking, Chu? No, I, I just want to um, to know clearly with the gestures. Because I, I can't tell. Let me see. <laughs> okay, hold on. I, I can't tell. Yugani, do you think they're using this position? Or I can't tell. I don't know. I can't see either. Oh, what are they doing to me? Okay, here. Let's try this. Oh no, no, no. Okay, let's see. Oh. No, it looks like he's pointing. He's pointing. I can't tell. Yeah. This is not Indian style. This is this is this is Eastern. But the face doesn't look Eastern. That's what's so yeah. confusing. Because his hair is so long and without any you know, oh. if if it's a Indian statue, his hair has to be I mean, um, do you know the Buddhism's their yeah, hair is so different. Yeah. Curly. Cur Curly. Curly. Yeah. This looks like it. I don't know. It's interesting because it doesn't look like he's praying with his hands. It looks like he's pointing. So I, I would say that this statue, here's the real size. Let me go back to the real size. This statue does seem to play a pivotal role in this piece of art. It is right on the corner. It's right on the corner. Let me see. Did I do this right? There you go. It's right on the corner. It's in the front. So the statue is important. It is important. 
and I guess it's just open to the art goer to the person who's looking at the art it's up to them to decide to interpret on their own what does it mean what does it mean to you how does it impact your life that's what art is about art is not about right or wrong it's about how did I grow how you know how did you learn how did you grow how did you become better that's what it's about so whoever you want him to be you know since the artist is not here to talk to us we can only use our brains and our hearts and try to figure it out yes I think actually I always enjoy the, the process that we can create or understanding with the art and also actually we are co constructor this kind of meeting I think this actually you come from uh, US and Eugene comes from Russia the idea and the thinking process is so different but I, we can build them build an um, communicative meeting with yes. the other. I think this process is is fantastic. It is. It is. I I enjoy it. I actually enjoy these art classes uh, with you. Like if you're thinking, not just looking at the art, saying yeah, it's pretty, <laughs> you know. But when you actually have something to add, I enjoy these classes almost as much as the pronunciation classes. <laughs> almost. Not quite, because <laughs> you guys know I love pronunciation. But yeah, I agree with you. Being I able think, to have actually, these conversations is great. I think uh, appreciation of art is a high level uh, with uh, our cognitive uh, skills, and uh, because you have to think the meaning, and also you need to express it in an English uh, English way, or because we are not uh, uh, you getting an and me and I, we are not native English speaker, so right. we need to think in English and to express it, um, express it clearly. Maybe yeah. it's not so clear, but we, our, I think we are trying our best to do this. Doing great. Yeah. You two and are doing great. I think I think you need to put this um, course into advanced students. <laughs> it's very. I, I like it. Yeah. I like it. What do you think it does besides your vocabulary, um, vocabulary building, it, your listening skills, because you're listening to someone else express their ideas, and so you're learning to collaborate. What else does it do for you? Oh, we need to have this conversation another time. 